Today, I wanna share with you one of those little life hacks for DaVinci Resolve that if you're doing shot matching, this little tip might just make your day. So here's the situation we sometimes run into with shot matching. Now, just a heads up, I already have color management set up for this video. So if you wanna learn more about color management, just check out one of my other videos. That's not the topic for this here. Now, as I pop over in the vector scope here, you'll see that uh, as I look at the skin tones, it's reading a little bit magenta in the vector scope. Let's say we just want to add a couple points of green. And one way you could solve this is just by taking your mouse, grabbing the offset and trying to you know balance it out nicely. So if I, if I try doing this, I kind of have to fish around a little bit till I find the spot that I like. Well, there's actually a keyboard shortcut that allows us to just add purely green. Watch this. One, two, three, boom. We've moved the image purely in a green direction. And you wanna know how I did that? I did that with a little $15 wireless number pad off Amazon. And there's nothing special about this. It's just DaVinci Resolve has built in shortcuts for the keyboard for printer lights and shot balancing. And I find that there are so many people who use DaVinci Resolve that have no idea about this feature. So often when I'm doing shot matching, I just wanna add a couple points of green or maybe take a little bit of magenta out of the image, something really small in a way that I want it to be small and precise. And something like using the, uh, the offset color ball on a color surface or even using my mouse in the, the UI, it just often isn't as precise as I want it to be. Printer lights are a beautifully precise way of manipulating the image using just red, green, or blue. So let's see how this number pad actually works here. So this lines up, and let me navigate over in Resolve, to the offset printer lights here. So uh, seven and four represent more red or less red. Uh, eight and five are plus green minus green, and then uh, nine and six are plus blue minus blue. So if I were to hit the seven multiple times, you'll notice that the image is getting increasingly red. Or if I just hold it down, you can see we fly in that direction. And if I hold four down, we uh, fly over in the opposite direction. So let me uh, uh, reset that. Uh, eight is green, right? So if I just hold eight, you'll see that we move in the green direction and uh, five is less green. And in that opening example, because I knew eight was green, basically all I did was just tap eight three times. One, two, three, boom. And we're, we're all balanced out. Uh, so nine and six are blue, right? So let me just kind of hold that down to show you what that looks like. And that is like the basic functions that you need to know. Now there's some other fun accessory stuff like uh, plus and enter over here. Plus uh, just brings the offset exposure up and uh, enter brings it down. So that one's super useful. And then there also are some slightly more wonky shortcuts if you want to use cyan, magenta, and yellow. So, uh, so just to show you, uh, if you hit one, one will move you in the direction of cyan. However, minus cyan is actually way up here in the corner of the minus button. So you have to hit you have to hit minus up here to go back. Now, I don't find that super intuitive, but it certainly can work. Uh, uh, magenta is much more simple. It's the number two and then zero is minus magenta. So that can certainly work. And then three is uh, yellow. So you can do more yellow or yet less yellow. That's the, uh, the, the dot beneath it. Personally, I don't find myself using cyan, magenta, and yellow simply because I can do that with the top. So just watch this. If you uh, look down here under offset as I tap one, what is cyan? Well, it's just adding green and blue. So if I reset that, I can also just have my fingers on the, the red, green, and blue, and I can just tap eight and nine at the same time. And it does the exact same thing of adding cyan. Now, if you're trying this in Resolve and it doesn't seem to be working, uh, there's a couple things you need to try. One is try toggling your num lock. So there's a chance that your number pad is acting like uh, arrow keys. And if it is, it's not acting like numbers. You need to hit the num lock to get yourself over there. And then it should be uh, operating as normal. Alternatively, uh, if it doesn't seem to be working even after that, you need to go to the color tab and make sure you have printer light hotkeys enabled. So if that's off, it doesn't matter how many times you're gonna be hitting the keys, it really isn't gonna do anything. So make sure that that is checked so you are good to work with that. Now, there's one other customization that I make that just makes life a lot easier. You'll notice as I uh, hit more red, we're moving in increments of 0.25, and that's not the default in DaVinci Resolve. So if you go to uh, the Preferences tab and go over to User and then Color and slide all the way down to the uh, Printer Lights area, you'll notice that I've set custom step sizes at 0.25. So by default in Resolve, it should be one. Uh, so let's save that real quick. If I try adding more red now, you'll notice every time I pop this red, it's jumping by one. And uh, from my experience and my preference, uh, moving a, a whole point is just too much for what I would prefer. So I go down and set all these step sizes to uh, 0.25. So it's a quarter of a step every time I hit the button. Now, one of those other little life hacks is if you hold down control and uh, hit any of the printer lights, 
it will move at a quarter of the standard step size. So in theory, you don't have to adjust the, uh, the step size if you're okay with holding down control or I think it's command on Mac every time you wanna make one of these adjustments. Feel free to experiment around to see what works best for you. Now, if you're looking to splash some cash and you wanna spend a little more than $15, let me just tell you about some of the other cool ideas out there. So most uh, full-size keyboards look like this, right? They have the, the number pad on this side of the keyboard. You can look for left-handed full-size keyboards, which put the number pad on the opposite sides. I think that there is a very good chance that sometime in the future, I'm gonna be buying one of those just because because it would fit perfectly with what I'm looking for. Uh, alternatively, if you want a wireless numpad uh, and you're looking to spend a little money, maybe you're a, maybe you're a keyboard snob, I have a little bit of that in me, but, uh, but not enough to, to spend a whole bunch of money on a numpad. If you want an upgraded numpad, I have to say uh, GMMK has a wickedly awesome looking wireless numpad that might be worth checking out. It's, it's a pricey thing, but uh, I would encourage you to check it out if you, if you are a little bit of a, a keyboard aficionado. If I were to give you any encouragement, I would say look for a numpad with more chunky keys. They have some really slim numpads out there, and one of the things is when the light is lower in the studio and I'm actually doing work, I really like being able to feel the key differences very obviously. The chunky keys are just easier to find in the dark, but to each their own, you know, purchase whatever works for you. Well, there you go. There is a little tip on how to make shop matching easier in your life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to stay around for future content. Also, uh, what do you think of this tip? Is this something you've used before? Is this new for you? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. All right, I'll see you in the next one.